Good morning. I guess I said good morning already. It's double good morning. That was just a beautiful song, and I just uh, am amazed how beautiful that song is. Uh, Jenny, thank you for singing that so beautifully and leading us through that, Um, because it's exactly what I want to talk about today. And it's just beautiful when you see uh, God coordinate services, and it seems like it happens all the time, but I'm still amazed by it every time it happens. Um, but literally, what, what you just sang and led us to sing together is what I want to talk about today. And you uh, led us in the words that says, your presence is all I need, it's all I want, it's all I seek. Without it, there's no meaning. Your presence is the air I breathe, the song I sing, and the love I need. And without it, I'm not living. Moses asked God to please show him his glory. Moses had already brought the people out of Egypt. He had seen all the miracles that God had done to bring his people out. He had seen the Red Sea open. They all went through the Red Sea. They saw the enemy destroyed in the sea. They saw the pillar of uh, cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. And here Moses is, chapter 33. This is after the commandments had been given the first time. He's before the Lord getting the commandments for the, written for the second time, and he's asking him to show the glory. My question is to you today is how desperate are you to see God's glory? How much do you desire to be in God's presence, to have his presence go with you where you are? How much do you yearn for God in your life and realize that you have absolute need? This morning in the prayer meeting that we had before services, which you are all welcome to come to at 945, Andrew opened the Bible uh, and he read from John chapter 15. In John chapter 15, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. A branch that isn't in the vine cannot bear fruit. He said, if you abide in me, you'll yield much fruit. But then he said, but apart from me, you can do nothing. I think one of the biggest things that we have to come to realize in our lives when it comes to faith in God is realizing apart from him, we can do nothing. And so often we can deceive ourselves and be deceived in our own hearts to think that real life is apart from God who made us, gave us the purpose for life, who's forming us and shaping us in his image. What are we doing here? Why are we alive on this earth? It's because God created us and made us to know him. He desires for us for us to be fruitful, and he desires for our fruit to remain and for us to live forever with him eternally. That's why you're alive on this earth. If you didn't know the purpose, God created you to have fellowship with you, that you would be born into his family as a child, that you would live life with him and know what it is to be in the presence of God. Thing is, do we know how much we need God? That's the question. How much do we desire to have God in our lives? Do we have a desperation for God? <laughs> for God. So we are going to do something uh, that we've done here before, but we're going to make this a prayer workshop in this time of teaching today. And what I want to do is I, I want to read through these verses in Exodus 33 and 34 where Moses is, is seeking God's glory. And I want to use this specifically as a time that we would seek God's glory, that we would seek his presence in our lives and for this church and, and for those that, that we are praying for and, and yearning for as well to have God's uh, life in them. Um, but also just to give you an example, showing you how this can be a very powerful part of your life with God. A lot of people struggle to pray. I hear a lot of times... People say, well, it's easier for me to study than it is to pray. Prayer requires a crucifixion of the flesh. Your flesh wants to get up. Your flesh wants to go away from God. But what praying through Scripture can do is actually calm you down to listen to what God says 
because he put these words in the scripture for us to listen, to, to discover his heart. But what it also does is it energizes your prayer because as you pray the word through the scripture, you're literally praying exactly according to the will of God because his word is a revelation of his will. And as you pray his will, you develop the intimacy that comes from a child understanding his father's heart, his father's desires. And so we're going to spend some time doing that today. So here's the things as we pray through scripture that I want you to know. First, to read and think about the verses. So we'll read through these verses, and then we'll start praying through them. But we're going to read through the verses and think about them. We're going to focus on the key thoughts and phrases of the verses that we're reading through. And then what we'll do is we'll pray to God according to the verse, which again is perfectly aligned with his will. So this is the way you build relationship and understand that all the things that we read in the scriptures, when we're reading about the life of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Noah and Moses and David and Samuel and all the apostles of Jesus Christ, all of these things were written as examples to teach us. God is encouraging us to come into a relationship with him that is intimate. And that relationship is what empowers all of our obedience. It, it empowers love in our lives. It is what, as Jesus said, makes us fruitful. Apart from him, we can do nothing. In him, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And this is what spending time in prayer is really about, is to go through this. So let's start. If you want to read with me, we're not going to focus on this. We're just going to read it. I want us to read the whole thing, and then we'll start in Exodus 33. In Exodus 33, and we're going to take about two minutes here and just read through these verses, and then we'll begin going through them more carefully. So if you would turn with me, Exodus 33, and notice here in Exodus chapter 33, and in verse 12, it says this, Exodus 33, 12, so Moses said to the Lord, see you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way, that I may know you, and that I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. And he, that is God, said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except that you go with us, so we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are on the face of the earth. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, please show me your glory. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of Yehoah before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And Yehovah said, here's a place by me. You shall stand on the rock, and so it shall be while my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. So then, as chapter 34 begins, here Moses, who had brought the fresh tablets, has them before the Lord. He's ready for the Lord. The Lord says, I'm going to write on them again, the second time, the commandments. And so he does that now, just dropping down to verse 5. So now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of Yehoah. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, Yehoah, Yehoah, God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. So Moses made haste, bowed his head toward the earth, and worshiped. And he said, if now I have found grace in your sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray, go among us. 
even though we're a stubborn people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us as your inheritance. So here is a section of scripture where we see a conversation between Moses and God and Moses crying out in the desperation. Did you sense his desperation? That he doesn't want to do anything without God. And that is really where we need to come to. The truth is, as we come to see what our lives really are on this earth and we see who God is, we should have a holy desperation for God to know that there's nothing going on in life. I'm not living apart from your presence. I must have you. And as a church, my friends, this has to be the heart and spirit by which we gather to worship God. Every time we come into this place and we start raising our voices in song, we need God. And as a group, we need God. We need his presence. I've said this many times before, and and for those of you who are maybe newer, haven't heard it, I'm going to say it again. The best thing that could happen for us as a church coming to this place is for the presence of God to come in such power and glory I don't need to say a word, that we don't need to do anything, that he just ministers to us in power. And we read in scriptures how when the tabernacle came, it was so powerful, the glory was so heavy, they couldn't even enter in, it was so weighty. And how when the glory came at another time, they could not even stand because the presence of the Lord was so heavy. There's a weight of glory. Or how when they built the temple and Solomon prayed that the glory came in so powerfully, nobody could go and be there. And God, when he pours out his presence, and many times we've seen it by the pouring out of fire or the cloud and the fire, his presence is so heavy. Why can't this be a place of his glory? Why can't this be a place where he comes? Why can't this be a place where we gather and that all who would come here would be ministered to by the glory of the Lord? If you want to know my vision, my vision is that we would be so near to God that he would just be upon us all the time. That walking past a shadow would heal somebody. That a touch of a garment would send power out to heal somebody. That the gospel and the good news would be a part of all that we're doing and that we would have a holy passion for God. But I tell you, God is is showing us to come. He says in the Psalms, he says, seek my face. He says, seek my face. And David, he says, my heart, Lord, with my heart, your face I will seek. That's what God wants from us. To view life by looking up into the heavenly places, setting our minds on things above and not on things of this earth. It says that without faith, it's impossible to please him. We must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The reason that God's house is called a house of prayer is because a people believes in his word and promises and we come ready to claim promises, not in arrogance, but in humility knowing that we are in desperate need of God in our lives and any life without him. As Jenny sang, it's just not living. It's existing, but it's not living. Real abundant life is to know the Father and to know the Son that he sent. That is what abundant life is. In John 17, I believe it's verse 3, you can read that. That's what we're talking about. Do you want God in your life? Do you want God in this church? Do you want God to be blessing the people that come here who are brokenhearted, who are oppressed, who are burdened? See, that ministry of the spirit that Jesus performed as he was walking on the earth is the only effective ministry we can perform, and it's 100% dependent on the Holy Spirit, on God's presence with us. We desperately need him. We can talk about a lot of topics, but this is the one that gets to the heart that really says, do we really want God? It's very easy to go through religious motions. And we talked about that last week, going through religious motions and and not seeing that God desires mercy, that God desires intimacy, that he wants things that connect our hearts together, things like justice and mercy 
and faithfulness. And so I'm asking you to open your heart humble before the Lord right now, that you would prepare your heart to pray these words that we can read about in the scriptures that, that Moses prayed. So we're going to start with Exodus 33, 12 to 13. In Exodus 33, 12 to 13, so Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you, that I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. All right, so here are some of the keys that I wrote as I looked at these verses and and want to lead you through this here today. Keys that we have that, one, you know my name. If I have found grace in your sight, show me your way that you may know and find grace, that I may know and find grace in your sight. So I want to model this for you now, and I just ask you to join me But if you feel like you got it, just go off on your own. But what we want to do is just show you. So as Moses said to the Lord, see, you say to me, bring up this people, but you've not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you said, I know you by name. Father, thank you that you know us by name. Thank you, Father, that we have found grace in your sight through Jesus Christ. God, it is our desire as we humble ourselves before you right now, as we look in your word, we pray that if we have found grace in your sight, and we know we have, that you would now show us your way. Give us revelation of who you are. Give us revelation of your way that we may know you, Holy Father, that we may know you, Lord Jesus, that we may be humble in your presence and that we would just receive of you. God, there is nowhere else we want to be but with you. And we as a church, we do not know the way that we should go. We do not know all the things we should do, but you do. You know why we're here even in this very moment, at this very time, God, you know the way. And so we humble ourselves to just be in awe and thank you, God, that you know our name and that you can teach us the way to go. And we want to know you. We do not seek anything else right now but your face. And we open our hearts to you, God, just telling you we desperately need you. We know we do. That apart from you, we can do nothing. And so, God, we want to know you and that we might find grace in your sight. And that you would consider that this church is your people. And that the people we are gathered here with right now are yours. And that we together, collectively, are a part of the body of Christ on this earth. Because we believe in you and we have received of your spirit. And we want you in our lives. Thank you. Thank you, Father. All right, let's read Exodus 33 now in verse 14. And he said, this is the Lord speaking, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Now, based on what you saw, what I modeled for you, I'm asking you now to read these verses and read these phrases. Look at the keys. It's a short verse. Let your presence go with me and give me your rest. And I just want you to meditate on these words and now just open your heart to God and expand before him yourself. So let's pray.
you're confirming to the Lord that you believe that he will go with you? Do you believe that this is his heart for you? If there's anything in your heart that doesn't believe that he will go with you, I just want you to meditate on that. Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Jesus said, lo, I'm with you always to the end of the age. He had the apostle write, there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. And he said, come to me, all you who are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. Are you receiving of his rest right now? His yoke is light, his burden is easy. He seeks the will of the Father and he does it. That's what he showed when he was on the earth. What's the light and easy yoke? Seek the face of the Father, his will, and do it. Okay, so how was that? you feel like you're able to pray and open up your heart to the Lord? Ask for these things. If you're struggling when we pray next, if you're struggling with it, then people bow your heads. <laughs> if anybody wants to raise their hand, I'd be happy to help. But this is his word. This is his will. These are his promises, and we just want to pray them. Let's go on to verse 15 now then. He said to them, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. That's desperation, right? I don't even want to go if you're not coming. If you're not with me, don't send me. You're everything. You're everything to me, God. I need you. Do not bring us up from here. Verse 16. For how will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight except you go with us? So we shall be separate, separate your people and I from all the people, or excuse me, so we shall be separate your people and I from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. How are we separate? By his presence, by his ways, by walking with him, we are separate. So let's go ahead and pray that through. If anyone would like any help in doing this, if you're struggling with it, just raise your hand. I'd be happy to help you. What are the things in life that you're facing where you know you need God so desperately? Thank God for the way he sanctifies you by his spirit, by the gospel. Just thank him and praise him that he sets you apart by giving you of his presence. That he can give you wisdom, that he can give you knowledge, discernment that 
He can give you every gift of grace that you need to be successful. And that you would shine as a light in this world. He goes on here now in verse 17. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken. For you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, please show me your glory. How desperately do you want to see God pour his glory out in your life? in the lives of those around you in this church? How desperately do you want God's glory and presence to be here in such a powerful way that the words of Jesus would become a reality in our eyesight when he said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And truly, truly, the works that I do, you shall do also and even greater works than these. see his glory, to see the humility that we need before him right now, to just realize that our Father in heaven set Jesus Christ up at the head, as the head of this, this body that we're a part of. Rock Valley is just a little part of this body, but we are all connected by faith to Jesus and all connected by one spirit to our one God and Father, to our one Savior and Lord. And if in your heart right now you're saying, I'm not sure I really want God's glory. I'm not sure I'm really seeking his manifest presence. It's a perfect time to just open your heart to the Lord. God loves the honest questions. Prayer is a crucifying of your flesh. It will bring out carnal thoughts that war against spiritual mindedness. And what made Jesus so amazing as an example in the flesh was he was overcoming his flesh continually by walking in the spirit, by humbling himself to the Father and knowing as Jesus himself said, I can do nothing apart from the Father. If Jesus knew that in the flesh he could do nothing apart from his Father, how much more for us Praise him that he is offering you his presence. Praise him that he offers to live and abide in you. And ask him to show you his glory. verse 19, God replies when Moses asks him to show him his glory, and he says, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of Yehoah before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face for no man shall see me and live. So let's think about these keys here. Worship God for who he is. Love on him because of his character and his nature. Love on him for his graciousness and compassion. 
and acknowledge the fact that for us to see God, it does require us to die. Jesus said that we should die with him. That he who seeks to save his life will lose it. He who will lose his life for my sake will find it. Prayer is how we, we, we strip away our flesh before God that we can come in tune with him to receive the life from him. As we sang, if we're not in his presence, we're not living. But yet in his presence, we are alive. So we pray, show us your glory. Pour out your presence. Let your goodness pass before us because we love you, God. We love everything about you. Let your eyes gaze upon him and see what he proclaims himself to be and take joy in God right now as you pray to him. Will you just release all of your own hopes and dreams and plans for the plans that God has for you? Can you just let it go? Can you just let any hurts go that are driving in your life? If there's any guilt in this moment or shame, just let it go. Let sin have no more dominion in this moment over you. Die to sin that you might be alive in God in this moment. Just, just give it all up. your heart and mind a living sacrifice. Just offer yourself to the Lord. In verse 21, the Lord said, here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. And so it shall be while my glory passes by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. And then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Just begin your prayer by just telling the Lord that you will stand where he wants you to stand. And you will stand on the rock that is Christ. And you will be in the place where he wants you to be. So that you can see the glory he wants to reveal to you. God did not withhold himself from Moses when he asked God. 
God promises that if you will draw near to him, he will draw near to you. And it's our faith in that promise that drives us into prayer right now. Let our flesh be stripped away with all of its doubts, with all of its unbelief. Declare to God you want to be right where he wants you to be. And that you forsake any other place that he doesn't want you to be. And then ask him to show you his glory. just connect with him with the intimacy just let him know you want to see him like Moses did that if we can't see his face that he would put his hand and cover our face with his own hand and that he would at least let us see as he walks past Tell God you know you need him. Tell God that you need him desperately. Tell God you don't want to go anywhere in life without him and that you forsake all the ways of this world for the glory of him and of his risen son. Drop down to Exodus 34, verse 5. There's beautiful lessons to be seen in the first four verses of Exodus 34 because as Moses brought the tablets, God is going to write with his own finger for a second time on those tablets. But the real place as we know that we need the writing is not on tablets of stone but on the tablets of our hearts, which is the promise of the new covenant, whereas he had written with his own finger on the tablets of stone he writes with his own finger his laws on our hearts on our minds and our sins and lawless deeds he remembers no more that the covenant and the agreement that we have comes from this very intimate relationship that we're even engaging in right now with the Lord to realize how desperately we need him how desperately we want him to write in us and what is that covenant really the commandments that are found in the heart Teach us all the character of God that he's about to reveal in his very name. Verse 5, Exodus 34. Now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of Yehoah. What does the name of God mean? So it says that he passed before him and proclaimed Yehoah, Yehoah God merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. And so Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth, and worshiped. I want you just to pray about the glories of the Lord and just bow your heart before him. Bow yourself in humility before him and just praise him for who he is. Stare at him, look at him, consider his mercy, his compassion, 
how long-suffering he is, his goodness. Immerse yourself in this moment into praying to God and engage with him for who he is. Worship him. Thank the Lord that he not only knows your name, but that he gave you of his name. When he commanded that you would be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That he put his name on you as his. says in the book of Revelation chapters 14 and 22 that the saints have his name on their foreheads that we bear his name and what does his name represent that he is a God of mercy and we are children in his mercy and sharing his mercy that we are compassionate because he is compassionate that we are long-suffering because he is long-suffering. That we are full of goodness and truth because he is full of goodness and truth. And we can become these things not of our own might or strength, but by his grace because he lives in us. Just give God glory for that. Give God glory that he is willing to pour out his presence in your life, in our lives together, that we can become Children of God, not in name only, but in what that name means, all the works of his name. God could have said anything he wanted here when he proclaimed his glory, and when he said, I will proclaim my name and my glory, this is what he proclaimed. I'm asking you to gaze upon the glory of the Lord right now. Just gaze upon these things that he himself proclaimed to be his glory and his name. He's an awesome God. He loves you so much. I ask you just to receive of his love right now. Receive of who God is. Let your heart and mind be changed because of the glory of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3 says that we are changed from glory to glory by the image of God. We stand in a mirror looking, seeing him, and we are changed from glory to glory into the very image of his son. Let it happen right now in this prayer for you. Just gaze upon him. Receive of the ministry of God that is present here right now. He's near to every one of you who want to be near to him. He's not far off. Father, we want all of you till you truly are all in all. without meaning apart from you, O Father. 
Show us your glory. Pour out your glory. Let us individually and collectively just be those who manifest your glory in this world. That we might shine like Moses shined when he saw your glory. We so desperately need you, Father. We so desperately love you. Our life itself. We worship you. Then he said, verse 9 of Exodus 34, If now I have found grace in your sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray, go among us, even though we are a stubborn people and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us as your inheritance. I want you to notice just how Moses in this is acknowledging. One of my prayers is that God would just acknowledge us that we're here today. Because in some ways, we all are a stubborn people and all have hardness of heart where we will choose what we can see more than him who is unseen, where we will work out of our own course and not yield to the Lord. And we acknowledge that. It'd be so much easier if we saw it all. But that is what God is doing now as we look at him and see who he is, that we find a place in him right now. And we just let him be God in our lives and God in our hearts. And we pray not only that we would be freed from our stubbornness, but all of us would be freed together. That God would pardon our iniquity. That God would pardon our sin and that he would take us together to be his inheritance. We, as believers, are joined together and brought together by Jesus Christ. And we were made to be inheritors, as it says in Romans 8, that we would be heirs of God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we might be glorified together with him. The battle is not with flesh and blood, and the battle is not outside. The battle is right here. That we would seek God's glory, and that as he shows us his glory, we would bow and worship, and that we would become like him. God is looking for all of you, and all of you, and all of you. This is how we become disciples. This is why it begins with an immersion into water. It is a death that we die, that we might rise up in a newness of life and that we might be immersed in the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and walk being immersed in his name, with his name and his spirit. If you have any other vision of how your life is to go, I just ask you to meditate on the calling that Jesus said when he said, all authority in heaven and in earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the heart of this prayer of Moses, that God would not send us out in this world alone, but with his presence. That as Jesus said, go preach the gospel to every creature. And he said, and these signs shall surely follow and confirm the word that God would be present in our lives, that God would be present in the way we live, and that he would pardon us, forgive us, 
and bring us to him to be his own children and to be his own inheritance and to have our inheritance in him. He is our portion forevermore. And I want you to pray now that, this prayer, but I want you to pray this for people maybe in this room, but also people not in this room. Who do you know who is resisting the Lord? Who do you know whose heart is not right? Who do you know that is on your heart right now that God might be putting on your mind to say, they need you so desperately, God. I need you desperately, and I know the desperation that I need you. I need you for them. I'm asking you to surrender your time right now to pray for someone else. Pray for yourself as you need to, but pray now for someone else. Let's pray. Father, as as I am desperate for your mercy and forgiveness in my life, I'm desperate for your mercy and forgiveness in their lives. God, hear our prayers. God, pour out your glory, God. Apart from your calling and your grace, God, who can come? can do nothing apart from you, God. We, we beg of you for our loved ones. We beg of you for our friends. God, pour out your glory. Manifest yourself. Let them know your son, Jesus. We are desperate on their behalf. Hear our prayer, God. Hear our prayer. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise because you are God. You're the creator of everyone and we know that you love the people we prayed for more than we do and you love them perfectly and you know their beginning, and you know their end. And as you made little Ari and had him brought forward for blessing this day, God, we remember that we all are just children in your hands. And God, we cast our care upon you because you said you care for us. 
and we can let all of our burden go to you. But God, we share this burden with you for, for both our own salvation and the salvation of those around us, for our children, for our friends, for our families, for our neighbors, for even the strangers, for this whole community, for this whole state, for this whole nation, for this whole continent, for this whole world. God, we do not have any desire or willingness that anyone would perish. You said that you are not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. And it's not that you are delaying your coming, but that you're waiting with long suffering. God, please bring about a spirit of repentance in us, in this church, and in this community, God, for where we can be a light, God. I pray that you would cause us to be a light. And you are that light. You are the presence we need. You are the one who is the way. And Jesus, you said you're the way, the truth, and the life. Please, please pour out your spirit on this community. Pour out your spirit on us, God. Break down our stubbornness and our hard-heartedness and our unbelief and let us give everything that we have to you. God, we glory in you. We know that you who began a good work in us is faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And we know we take our faith in you and, Father, we seek you. And so, Father, here today, we have sought you. for your. We seek your glory. We seek your grace, your ways, your presence. God, we desire your rest. God, we seek your name, your forgiveness for us. We seek your forgiveness for us and for others. We seek your mercy and compassion, your long-suffering, and your goodness and truth. You are our God now and forevermore. Amen. For those of you who struggle to pray, you just prayed about 50 minutes. You opened up your heart to God, and you can do this every day. God is looking for a people who will seek him, who will earnestly desire him in their lives. And so if you feel stuck in not being able to talk to God and not being able to converse with God in prayer, pray through the scripture. It will just walk you right through, and you'll be amazed what a change and a difference it makes. Hopefully now you feel a deeper sense of his love, a deeper sense of his peace, and a deeper sense of the calling that you have in him. Let's worship him.